Hey, welcome back, guys. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and support me on Patreon if you can. And if you can't support me, that's fine. Uh, you can let the ads play. That way I get something out of it. All right, so let's continue on to business. Now, here we want to add to cart. So now the thing is, what we could do here, there, there, there are two ways uh, before we go that, that far. There are two ways to add to the cart. So the first one is when the user clicks the button and it goes to another page, it takes them to another page where they, they actually, they're redirected to that page or the cart itself. So they add one item at a time. So we redirect them to the cart immediately and then they see the stuff there and then they, if they want to, they can come back and add more items. So this one, uh, the other way would be if they click and are taken to another page, but then they are redirected back immediately. So they don't really see that they're being redirected back. So we just add the thing, uh, the item to the cart, and then we, we bring them back here. Okay. So now that, uh, that's kind of a similar uh, way as I've mentioned with number one. Now those only happen when you're not using JavaScript because for anything to happen here, we have to actually go to an actual page and do some calculations there and then bring the user back if you want the user to be back. Now, the other way to do it is to use some JavaScript. With JavaScript, they don't need to leave the page. All they do is add to cart and then they will see a message saying, okay, your item was added to cart. And so do you want to go to the cart or do you want to stay on this page and continue shopping? blah 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 that is a better way but it's very important to note that not every uh, device has JavaScript enabled that's number one and number two not every device can use JavaScript so you have to use JavaScript sparingly you have to be conservative on how much JavaScript you use now on the admin section there it, it's okay to use as much JavaScript as we want because the admin will always be on a PC or a computer. And if it doesn't work on the browser they have, they can always upgrade to a new browser until the admin section is working fine. But you can't ask users to do that on your behalf. They'll simply just leave the site and go to a site that they can easily use. So these are, these are the choices you have to make when dealing with this. Now, what I will do is I will create both ways and then you can decide which one you want to leave you want to leave the old one or the new one and also the old one will act as a fail safe in case you have a user that doesn't have javascript your website will still run because the javascript will be disabled okay so with that explanation let us begin so we'll begin by the redirecting method now, the thing we will do here is the beauty of what we have done, where we put the product in one file here, is that we can do all the editing right here and it will update on every page where there is a product. Okay, so where is our link? It's right there. Add to cart. Hmm. So, what do we do here? So, yeah, uh, this is the href right here. So all we, we have to do is create a link to the proper uh, controller. So to begin with, I will put root as usual. And then root will be sent to add. We just create a page called add underscore to underscore cart unsurprisingly and then we'll put a slash there and let's put the product id so here on this one we don't need to use the slug and i actually figured out that i was spelling slug wrong all this time it's actually not s l a g it's actually s u g like that so my bad in case you needed to google it and figure out what that is all about okay Continuing, 
at this point I want to put uh, we don't need to use the slug here because this is not part of SEO when you click add to cart this one is just for technical issues where we're adding something to the cart so we can use the ID now the ID is better because it's easier for the database to find an ID than it is to find this slug so let's use the ID and make our websites work easier so I will say data like this and we're going to say ID like that yes yes so now if I go back to my page and refresh you will see that now when you point to add to cart you see add to cart and number seven but of course if I click here I will not go anywhere but the home page because we don't have this add to cart controller but being seeing that we are actually programmers let's create that particular controller so it's always good to copy from what already exists it saves a lot of time so i will copy from the home right here mm, copy yes and then i will go to the new page and paste that way i can just delete what i do not like so let's see add to cart yes save that as add to cart.php mm. that's all we needed to do so we are not going to be loading any views in this thing at all so uh, what do we need here so let's remove this right off the bat and then when we add to the cart we need to be able to return the user exactly where we found them yeah we should be able to return them where we found them so we'll we'll figure out something to do there so that we can return them back to that place but for now we can do that in a later video because uh, the process is slightly complex so for now we're just going to say location and we are going to use a root root and then we're going to say uh, shop so regardless we're just going to return them to the shop but this could not be true because sometimes you may not be on the shop page and so we will deal with that later for now we just go back to the shop so how exactly do we add to the cart so user load image loader we will definitely not need this one and user data check login uh, you don't need the user to be logged in in order to for them to add something to the cart so out my friend we definitely do not need you and here we do not need wait a minute data user, 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 user we don't need any of this actually at all okay what about that hmm actually uh so the only thing here we have to do is to check if that item actually exists in products that's all so what i will do is collect the data that comes from here as you can see we added the id at the very end here so we will get that as a parameter here so i will just say id now since we know it's an id we can cast it to an integer but let's um, let's leave it at that because we can use prepared statements so that is all okay so what i will do is i'll say id wait a minute in the functions here we do have escape okay so let's just escape it for good practice so i'll say id is equal to escape id like i saw uh -huh. 
Now let's select all from products where ID is equal to ID. Limit one. And then uh, let's create an array here, right here, and just uh, the array will contain ID, uh, which will be equal to the ID here, which will contain ID, like I saw. Okay, so that's how you create an array. Instead of having to create it here, add the, add the ID and then put it here, so we can just do it directly in there. Okay, so now that we have this, select all from products, if we do find it, so we don't need a page title because we won't be staying on this page at all. We are just visiting for a very short time. So here, um, once we get the rows, if row exists, uh, then we will do all this. But all this we don't need. Out, out. Let me close that there. I don't actually need to do any of this because this is to create thumbnails, so none of that. Okay, good. So all we do is just check if the ID uh, exists. Now, it's better to to put this at uh, empty string like this because if somebody does not provide the ID at the top there, then you get an error. But if you do this, then you won't get this error. It will be all good. Okay. So now that we have all this, let's see if we actually return something. So I will stop this from doing anything just like that. And then I just want to show the results. So that way we get to see whether our content actually exists. So add to cart, let's click. Bam. And as you can see, we did find the item. Now, what happens if we remove that seven there? We get nothing, but we don't get an error. That is very important. So back, and this is what we get. So the item has been returned. So since we have returned this item, all we need to do is add it to the cart. Now. There's no need uh, for us to add all these details to the cart, like what the name of the item is, what the price, none of this. We don't need to add any of this. All we need is the ID itself. So once we add that ID, we are good to go, period.